So you might be thinking, Ducky 1 2 or the Ant Pro 2, and which one's right for you? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Over here again, we have the Ducky 1 2 Mini, the pure white version, and then over here we have the Ant Pro 2, and again, the white version. And first off, the Ducky 1 2 Mini comes in at right around 800 bucks. The Ant Pro 2 comes in at right around $90. So as far as price, they're not too far off each other. As far as accessories within the box of each keyboard, you get a detachable USB-C cable, rubber coated, both very durable. You get some extra keycaps with both keyboards. I sold the ones with my Ducky 1 too many because I keep on getting pink. With the Ant Pro 2, you get the variety of keycaps right here. All right, so before we get into the build differences and the sound test between both of them here, there's one key difference between both boards, and that is that the Ant Pro 2 can be used wirelessly via Bluetooth. You can actually sync it up to three different devices right here. The Ducky One Too Many is just wired. So that might be able to make your decision for you right there off the bat. If you need a wireless keyboard or to have that option to use it wirelessly, bam, the Ant Pro 2 is obviously your choice. Now speaking about them plugged in, they both connect on the back left side of the keyboard here and there's no wire router. So again, you're kind of stuck with that wire position. Me personally, my favorite position of the wire is on the left Left side of any keyboard so it suits me perfectly the ducky one too many no software needed plug it in and everything is controlled right on the board right there and it saves onto the board by the way now with the in pro 2 you do have to use the software but it does save it to the board as well and you can cycle through your profiles and now i have heard different stories from other people in the comments or just watching and reading other reviews people saying their Ant Pro 2 was plug and play as well. Now there have been many of firmware updates on the Ant Pro 2. Uh, actually my Ant Pro 2 straight out of the box, I could not adjust a single RGB on it. It was set exactly how it was and that is it. Nothing would change for me. I actually had to get on there, download the software and then update the firmware. Then I can adjust everything, right? So that was kind of a stinker that I had to do that when again, Ducky One Too Many was pretty much straight up plug and play. But again, that can be a pro or a con for you. Do you wanna use software, get in there, really adjust it and tweak it to your liking, really customize it up? And then again, over here, it's pretty much what you have on the board is what you have. So again, that can be personal preference. Me personally, I prefer to use no software. Now, since we got them connected here, let's take a look at this real quick. Take a look at the RGB. Again, I got a massive light right above us, shining right down on us here, and still look at the difference with the RGB. I mean, the Ducky one too many over here, and Pro 2 over here. In my personal opinion, and it's quite obvious, the Ducky one too many is blowing the Ant Pro 2 out of the water here. And both of these are on the max setting. Here we go, now you can see some with the lights out right here. Now you see that little jitterness, that's just as far as the camera frame rate and the uh, light movement and all that. They are both incredibly smooth. And with the lights out, they both look pretty darn good, you know what I mean? But again, the uh, Ducky one too many is brighter. All right, so now as far as build, both of these boards are pretty much completely plastic. You have a metal board underneath your keycaps and everything, and the keycaps on both boards are double shot PBT. Now speaking about both boards being plastic right here, at least with that plastic frame and all, right? They have a little bit of flex. I mean, you gotta pinch them pretty good to move them in. The Ducky One Too Many flexes in a little bit more because you have two layers of that frame right there, when the Ant Pro 2 is one layer of that frame. Now as far as downforce flex, say if you're typing or you're pressing on the board really hard, neither of them flex at all, really. I mean, you get a very mild amount, but none of us are going to be ever leaning into our keyboards that much. So again, as far as downforce flex, not much at all. Frame flex, uh, the Ducky One Too Many definitely more than the Ant Pro 2. Now as far as underneath of the board here, both of them have four rubber feet on the corners right here, but the Ant Pro 2 is stuck in that one position right there. It's a nice ergonomic incline, but the Ducky One Too Many, you have two other feet to pop out. You have the small feet or the big feet right there, and then whenever it's flat, you have that ergonomic incline as well. So, I mean, it's kind of the stinker that you don't have any options with the Ant Pro 2, but honestly, how it's set, is very comfortable. And then as far as switches on the bottom of the keyboard, you guys can see the Ant Pro 2, you have your power on and off for your wireless, your Bluetooth, and then on the bottom of the Ducky One Too Mini, that's a dip switch right there, which you can adjust your function key and move around your Windows key and all that stuff. I don't know, I've never adjusted that at all. I just left it exactly how it is. So as far as build, they're both very similar, but where it starts to differ is day one, whenever you're picking out your keyboard. The Ducky One Too Mini, you can only get in Cherry MX switches. And I don't say only, in 
a bad way. Cherry MX Switch is probably my favorite. It actually is my favorite. Cherry MX Red, I absolutely love. And that is what we have on the Ducky One Too Many. But you can get in a variety of Cherry MX Switches from your browns, your blues, your blacks, and again, your reds you have right here, your silence or your silvers. Many options to suit you right there. And Cherry MX is a fantastic switch. Coming over here to the N Pro 2, you can get your Cherry MX Switches, you can get Kales, Kale Box, you can get Gator on. So you have a variety of options to choose. And when I look on Amazon, they're all pretty much the exact same price. And on the Ampro 2 we have right here, we have Kale Box Reds. Now just real quick, talking again Kale Box Red and Cherry MX Red over here, two very, very similar switches. I've used both uh, switches on multiple keyboards and they feel and sound pretty much the exact same. But with these two boards here, they sound quite different. Let's get a quick listen. Fairly similar, but the Ducky One Too Many is a little more high pitched than the N Pro 2. And yes, some of that is playing into the switch right there, but what I want you to focus on is more or less the keys with stabilizers. Spacebar right there, let's look at our backspace button here. Ducky One Too Many, N Pro 2. Huge difference right there, and what's different is the N Pro 2 actually has lubed stabilizers. So that's a big difference right there. Again, as far as the stabilizers being lubed on the N Pro 2 right here, they are a little bit more stable than the Ducky One Too Many. That's not saying the Ducky One Too Many is bad by any means. I mean, it is an absolute minor difference. All right, so both boards, very, very similar, right? If you're in the market for a 60% keyboard, I'm sure both of these are on your list right now because these boards are incredibly popular. Now for me, I don't really use 60% keyboards that much. I mean, I love them. They're very fun. They're fantastic for gaming. Again, as far as that space on your desk, but Again, me, I prefer a 10 keyless keyboard or the smallest I prefer is a 65%. And that's where I'm gonna point you in this direction with the Dirt God and HK Gaming Hade 68 right here. I absolutely love this keyboard. I did a full review on this one as well. And I believe this one ranges right around the same price. It goes from 99 to 120, I believe. The only downside about this board is it comes with ABS keycaps. Now they are very thick ABS keycaps, but still it's kind of a stinker that they don't have PBT, but a fantastic board, complete metal body. I absolutely love it. And by the way, on the hush hush here, right? We're gonna have a 60% keyboard review coming up very soon that I think is gonna blow all of these out of the water, even the Mecha Mini right down there. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you can catch that one as well. But all in all, between the Ducky One Too Mini and the Ant Pro 2, again, it's up to you. I've been rhyming so much throughout this entire video. But seriously, you really gotta go through the video, uh, pick apart which things you really like, and then decide that way. If you want my opinion here, I think the Ant Pro 2 is honestly a better deal, a better value, right? More features with the wireless and everything. Again, I just feel like it's a better value. But as crazy as it sounds, you all know, and Techni's a big value guy, right? Since I buy this stuff with my own money, I do like the Ducky One Too Many better. I don't know, just the look of it, it looks different. I mean, we've seen so many keyboards or 60% boards with this exact same build right here. The Ducky One Too Many just has a unique build. It just feels fantastic when I'm typing on it. The RGB is crisp. I really like it. But again, as crazy as it sounds, yes, the Ant Pro 2 is a better deal and across the board a better value. But honestly, neither of these keyboards sit on my desk and I don't use either of them. The Dirt God Hade stays on my desk. But hey, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this one. I hope I was able to help you out a little bit here and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.